Welcome everybody. Today, April 7th, 2024, I am Heath Hill. I am leading today the Gospel of God Ministries. We're the Central Iowa um, group that meets every week to Bible study. Um, if you believe that Christ forgave all sin when he died on the cross, and that by believing in that, we are sealed, our, our soul is sealed, well then great. We all um, have the same eternal salvation. So let's begin today. We're going to talk about graft in. Now, just so you don't think right off the bat, the guy's got a spelling error on graft in. We're going to go through what graft in, and it's maybe a little bit confusing, maybe something you haven't heard today, but that's a lot of times what we do is we try and tackle those things that, hmm, that's not familiar, that's not what I thought that meant, and, and, uh, but today there's a lot of information, so I just tell the group here gathered today that we're going to go things a little, through things a little bit quicker today, and so we're going to be going through theories and ideas but the verses are there, especially towards the end. The verses are just pounded into this thing. And I think if we read every one of them, we'll be here an hour. And we're going to try not to do that. We're going to be about 35, 40 minutes, hopefully, today. So, all right. We're this is in our core series, Graft In. Um, Sonia will put up, uh, uh, hopefully, all the, the pertinent information you need up on the website here sometime this week. And we'll go from there. All right, so questions to be answered about graft in. Here, here's what we're going to answer today. When is it? And who, what, where, why, and when is it? Okay, so we're going to get to all of these, and we're going to go through kind of as a check mark. But before we get to this, I'm just going to point out on the time, on the big timeline, you'll see here, graft in. In. Okay, so if you're looking at your timeline, salvation to Jews and Jews and Gentiles who are grafted in, it, we're in the gospel of God, we're from that 34 to 62 timeline, okay? So that's when graft in is scriptural. Um, uh, anyway, so just so you know, it's be, between the gospel of the kingdom to the Jews only and... and um, or after and then before our gospel of God. All right. So who, what, why, why when, um, the who we're going to dwell a lot of time on. So we're going to kind of blast through the rest of these. But so let's go to the first one. What, what does graft in mean? And for many gathered here, you, know, you might already know. So this will be a little bit of a review. Hopefully you'll do this presentation next time. But <coughs> first and foremost, is the word grafted? Or is it graft? What word are we talking about? Because I think we think of graft or grafted as like plants, like fruit plants specifically, okay? So what are we talking about in Scripture? Grafted or graft? What's the definition in the world? And what was the defini definition back 100 years ago or 400 years ago, okay? It's consistent with what today is, but a lot of times we kind of use these interchangeably in society today. And they're really not a, an interchangeable society word. It's just that, that the word graft is now kind of used for grafted, even though that, that's not really the root word of the grafted. The root word of the grafted is to graft someone, is actually to kind of game them. When someone in a position of trust, like a government official, takes money or property in a dishonest way, that's called grafting. You're a grafter if you take money from the public as a politician. You're a grafter. Money or property that is gained illegally or unfairly, okay? But to uh, graft, and you hear me saying that as the ED, even though you think I'm sneaking a T in there, but I'm not. Graft is to insert in a body to which, uh, to insert something into a body to which it does not originally belong. So that's what we're doing with fruit plants, right? We're not doing this. It's not something in authority that's trying to steal something from the fruit plant. No, we're, we're intentionally putting two things together that don't normally, are normally found together. Okay? So to join one thing to another so as to receive support from it. 
to join two things that were separate, right? So this word, grafted, doesn't appear at all in, your, in Scripture. Not a single verse. Why? Well, because grafted is, is about stealing, <laughs> so to speak. Graft appears six times in Scripture. So today, you can imagine, we're not going to talk about grafted because it's not in Scripture. Graft is. But which Scripture am I talking about? How does Scripture use it? Okay? In Scripture, referring to the word graft or grafting... We know that, by, but just by thinking through it, Scripture is using the, not the, uh, the unfair gain, it's using the adjoining things together, right? But only the King James Version used graft. All the other versions say grafted. So what are they saying? They're saying that they're, they're unfairly gaining into what... What? No, they don't mean to say that, but, but they don't understand what the true definition of these words are. They're, 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 mixing them, they're mixing them together. Don't believe me? Grafted, 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 grafted. This one's graft. Well, it, it's interesting, by the way, for you who want to study a little bit deeper, this new... Uh, living translation is brutal on how it translates this verse starts talking about Abraham's tree and it, 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 we're not going to get into it but you see this was about double the size of what these verses really are okay and but grafted so are these are these other versions saying that um, someone is unfairly gaining or stealing from another group well, if your Bible says grafted, and you understand what grafting is, it is saying that. Only the KJV verses use the, the graft, okay? So they're not saying this. Of course they're not saying this, but they don't know what they're not saying, right? They, someone's in authority. A Gentile has authority over a Jew now because they're grafted in? What? Anyway. Okay, so if they aren't saying this, why do they use the word grafted and all goes back to the, 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 uh, the preserved line and the non-preserved line and how it was in the original manuscripts and how that word has been changed. So anyway, so graft, not, not grafted, graft. Okay, where does scripture use it? Well, graft, or any derivative, graph, grafted, I'm sorry, not grafted, graph, graft, graphing, whatever else, only appears six times, and really only in four verses, but two times in a couple of those verses. And only in Romans chapter 11. So if you were to think about your whole faith, your whole philosophy, your whole religion, your whole Bible, everything else like that, and graft is everywhere. No, it's not. It's in one chapter. Why do people spend so much time talking, oh, we're grafted in, or grafted. Uh, we're grafted in. It's in one chapter. It's not a significant part, nor is it a part of any of our salvations. It has nothing to do with us. Okay, Romans eleven seventeen. 17, we'll probably read through these uh, and then we can get a little bit m more in the next slide here. But, and if some of the branches be broken off and thou being a wild olive tree were graft in among them and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Okay, thou will say then the branches were broken off that I might be graft in and they also if they abide not still in Unbelief, it doesn't say disbelief, by the way. Unbelief, disbelief, can't think of those, as, but they're, they're, diff they're different. Anyway, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. And, and then Romans eleven twenty four. for if thou wert cut out of an olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to 
nature, or contrary to nature, into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? Okay. So, boom, 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 four of them. If we really take the context of it, we probably start in Romans 11, 11 and go the whole way through 11, 24 to get all those grafts in there. But, but here's what the focus is the, in blue. Because of unbelief, they were broken off and thou standest by faith. This is all about belief or unbelief of a Jew. And because of the belief, or in this case, the unbelief of a Jew, someone else is replaced. Yeah. So did belief come in in the gospel of Christ? Because in the kingdom gospel, you necessarily didn't have to believe. You just had to do the work, correct? True to a certain extent. They did have to believe in Christ. So there was the kingdom gospel, which really was just works, 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 works. But then there was that, that, that level um, in, the, I would call it the new covenant, so to speak, when you had the blood. So the old covenant, the new covenant, was so all with, just with Jews, that they did then have to believe upon the name and confess. And we'll get to that verse too as well. Um, one that I would have inherently told you 20 years ago to, to believe. I know exactly Romans 10 9 but um, but but yet their their faith plus works has 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 always been the crux it's the fact of whose faith and we know now that once we once they get into the thousand years it's the faith of Christ that, that's saving them so technically it is faith plus works salvation program but really it isn't their faith that's going to save them so that's why we call it a works based faith but but truly them getting into the thousand years works then them being saved technically is faith plus those works because then they get the eternal at the end right okay so, but yes, we don't focus on it because that's not really what's getting them into their salvation. That everlasting salvation is works, baby, works. Right? But if they don't believe in Christ, they don't believe in God, who God is, then they don't even get into that, so to speak, because they have to believe in the Christ, in the new covenant. Yeah. I think you and I could go around and around. Yeah, I know. I know. It's so... To, to keep track of it. you have something? Um, when you consider Abraham and all of the, uh, you might say the old pioneers of, of works, it was granted on to them, the righteousness was granted on to them. Yep. Yep. His, his, of their yeah, his faith was count, counted as righteousness. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. 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 So we're not going to read through all this, but just know that <clears throat> I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall is come unto the Gentiles to provoke them to jealousy. So because the Jews said, nope, they're unbelief. Now the Gentiles have a way. Now the Gentiles have a path, right? Okay, a way of being saved. Now we'll go through what is that path and what does it look like? It's the exact same thing that the Jews are doing. Become a Jew is what this is saying. Those Gentiles became Jews, right? Gospel of Christ. We'll, but we'll get into that. But it's all because of the Jews did not believe, like Michael and I have talked a number of times. The Jews just didn't get it. They just didn't get it. They just didn't get it. And finally God like, okay, now I'm going to let the Gentiles be saved the way you are going to be saved. I'm going to let them be saved into the everlasting kingdom just to cause you like, man, you should get this. You should be so protective and, and wanting this to be only for you Jews. But they didn't. So, okay. All right. So what, what is it? What is graft? How is it used in scripture? Is it graft or grafted? Um, uh, where only Romans 11, <clears throat> when does scripture use it? So, of course, when is... Romans 11. Well, the book of Romans was written to, by Paul in approximately A.D. 62, okay? Give or take. 
Could have been a little bit earlier than that because this is really the beginning of the introduction. Remember when we say Romans 1.1, 1, 1, uh, Paul, a servant unto Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. He is giving new information about a new gospel in Romans. He's introducing it. But in Romans 11, he goes back to the old one. Talking about the old one still, right? So all, Romans, the entire book is him establishing or, or establishing and then sta stabilizing or establishing through the entire book of Romans. So by the end of Romans, we actually understand what the gospel of God is. But he's still trying to get these Jews one last chance that by the hope of Israel that they would be saved and they would qualify for that everlasting kingdom, right? Still one last chance. So we can't say all oh, Romans is written to us. It's establishing our gospel, but it's not written to us because he's still trying to hook the old guys, the old Jews, right? All of these verses, though, were written 62 A.D. And all of these verses were written in the present tense. Now, if we go back to that that verse that I was talking, 11-11 um, uh, um, here, it, back when we were to read this, okay? I say then, okay? So, it, it gives us a present tense. And then as the, as, the, as the new paragraph, as you have that little PP in your, in your Bibles, the new paragraph begins with the new thought begins, Roman 11-11. So, two verses after 11-11 uh, and 11-13. It says, for I speak to you Gentiles. I speak. Does that say I have spoken or I used to speak about? No, it's a present tense recording. He is not talking about something in the past. He says, for I speak to you generally, and says, I am, again, not I was. It's, it's a present tense presentation of what these verses are. They're not about something in the past past. They're the here and now in the year 62. That's when this, these applied, these six times that graft is used, okay? Not talking about a past piece of information. It's talking about right here, right now, in this 62, where it was recorded, and you can see this is starting to fade out. I don't know how to present this, because 57, technically, is when the gospel of God was received by Paul. Uh, I should probably blur this line the whole way right here. This whole time is blurry right there, okay? But the gospel of Christ. That's when. Romans 11, gospel of Christ. Okay? So why does Scripture use it? Why, does it? why do we use the term graft in? Well, it's about salvation. Remember? Talking about how the Jews didn't believe. So now they're, we're going to allow the Gentiles to do something they've never been allowed to do. In the previous gospel, they were never allowed to do it. Now in this one, they are. So this, the same everlasting salvation that has been offered to the Jews in the previous gospel of the kingdom, now being offered to the Gentiles who convert to Jews and are grafted in. We can stop right there. If we understand that statement, it's about everlasting salvation. It's not about eternal salvation. It's about getting into the everlasting, that thousand years. And now Gentiles who become Jews can get in. Romans 10.1, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer. Uh, so just a chapter before. For Israel is that they might be saved. We're talking about Israel's salvation, initially. That if they confess, they do a work, and believe, they'll be saved. There's no difference in Romans 10 and Romans 11 between Jews and Greeks now, you'll be like, wait a minute, Heath, I thought you said that there is none. Yeah, that's in, that's in our gospel. We're still in the one before. We're still in the gospel of Christ, right? So there's no difference. They can both become Jews, and they can both qualify for this everlasting salvation in the thousand years, right? There's no difference. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through. So this is an example in Acts talking about this same gospel. 
declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. Well, what's a conversion of the Gentiles? It's them being grafted in. By the way, if anybody wants all these verses, there's a printout back there behind there. So take that with you or you can grab it or hand it out, whatever, because there's just a lot of verses. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said that it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing that you put, put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of which one? Everlasting life. We turn to the Gentiles. We're letting the Gentiles be grafted in. This, we don't have to support it with anything more than this. We're gonna. <laughs> Where are we gonna go through some verses, right? But this stepping through an introduction into Romans 11 is so easy to understand what graft in means. We're talking everlasting salvation that was given to the Jews in the previous gospel, gospel of the kingdom. And now in this one, the only thing that changes is now Gentiles can become Jews. Okay, Romans eleven twenty two. Behold, therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity toward, but toward the goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Oh, this is a salvation you can lose. Good thing we're talking about everlasting and not eternal. Right? As we lead up into Romans. Now we're into 11.22. We're into that group. We, it so reinforces the fact that we are talking about this salvation to two different groups that are qualifying not for what we, what we qualify, eternal. Right? So, who is Scripture calling it? Man, we're almost done. Just kidding. <laughs> Boy, we're not even halfway through, and we're on the last point, right? Okay? But who is Scripture calling graft in? Who are the graft in? Now we know what it means. We know how how it how it happened we know where we know when but who are those people let's reinforce that we know what we're actually talking about in that last screen which is is calling the gentiles who convert over to being jews they're no longer gentiles they've they've done everything to convert themselves into being a jew so an overview of who is being grafted in we're going to go through this one more time different words grafted in is a gentile being grafted into christ Okay, we're going to go through the verses that actually say, because there's so many people who say, oh, this is being grafted into Israel. Absolutely not. Okay, here's why. Graft in um, to Jewish everlasting, uh, 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 I guess my next point. Uh, they're grafted into Jewish everlasting salvation in the same manner, but after a Jew. Same way that a Jew would be, but the Jew had to be offered it first, okay? It has nothing to do with eternal salvation like we talked before. It simply is to gain entry into the thou physical thousand-year Jewish everlasting kingdom. But there's a difference, what I thought I had my point, point here, which is actually this point. There's a difference between being Israel, a people, and being a Jew, a faith. And we use those terms kind of interchangeably, a little bit too often probably, talking about Jews, when really we're talking about the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, This is a tribe. This is not a belief. This is American. This is Israel. This is Saudi Arabia, whatever. That says nothing about what you believe, being of Israel. The faith is being a Jew. So they are not being grafted into Israel. They're being grafted in through a faith, through the Jewish faith, by becoming a Jew. That has nothing to do with Israel. Okay? Graft in is not the Gentiles receiving the promises, blessings, or covenants of Israel. The graft in people, the people who say, I'm going to become a Jew in those, you know, in those uh, years uh, um, uh, 48 to, to 62, <clears throat> those, in those 14 years, they don't get any land. interesting that today though people say oh i'm a jew and they're meaning the people they're, right the people that they're not meaning the jewish faith are they they 
Right, kind of like kind of like what the world uses for graft and grafted. They kind of are interchanging those. But anyway, so this graft is not the Gentiles. Graft is simply the offering of salva everlasting salvation through the Jewish faith. Has nothing to do with Israel. Graft. And we got verses that are going to reinforce all this, but we might go through those kind of quick. Graft in is only taught in that one gospel, gospel of Christ, to, to two groups, Gentiles and Jews. Does that make sense when I say two groups, right? So the Jews first, and then to the Gentiles, who of course are going to convert over into a Jew. So at the end, there's really only one, but it's being presented, it's being offered to two different groups, right? Two different belief structures, right? It's not taught in our gospel of God, and it's not taught, this graft in, in the gospel of the kingdom. In each of those, there's only one group, right? This one is taught, this graft in, gospel of Christ, two groups. You have to have two groups for one to be graft into another. And all the other gospels that Paul preaches, only to one, right? So, two groups. Same faith as what was taught in this one, but to two groups. It's the only difference between blue and purple, really. Add a second group, graph in. So who? I have four additional points on the last point, which was the who, right? So the who is going to now get additional resources. We, we don't want to get bogged down on these at all. Okay, But here are four additional points to support who the graft in are. The graft in, to, to understand those four additional points, we have to understand who are his people? Who are his people in Scripture? When you see the word his people anywhere in the Bible, it is only referring to Israel. So in 11.1, 1, in Romans, where it talks about, um, I say then, hath God cast away his people? It's saying, has he cast away Israel? Well, no, he hasn't cast them away, but he's going to cause them to be jealous by allowing these Gentiles to be grafted in, right? But his people, we have to understand that. The second one is, we have to understand that the faith plus work salvation taught in Romans 9 through 11 is the gospel of Christ. This two-group mentality. If we haven't talked about that, I know we have on different videos, but not today as much. But preach to two groups. Whenever you see two groups, they and us, um, them and, and we, and whatever else like that, anywhere in Scripture, you know you have a gospel that's talking to two groups. You know you have the gospel of Christ. Everything else is only ever preached to one. When it says in our gospel, and we're going to get to it, when it says there's neither Jew nor Gentile, right? Hebrew or Greek, bond or free. For we are all one. It's saying it doesn't. In this gospel, it says, oh, there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. But there's still Jew and Gentile. There's still two groups. It's just they have the same salvation now, right? But it's afforded to the Jew first. Then. Okay, so graft in um, to the first fruits. Who is the first fruit? It is Christ Jesus. It is not Israel. Okay? We'll show some verses on that. And then graft into the root. Who is the root? And if you say Israel, you are wrong. <laughs> the root is holy, and the root is Christ Jesus. It is not Israel. So let's go quickly. Just put the, screen, the, the, the screens up. We might talk about a few of these. But these will all support who the graft in is. So his people, how do we get to his people being Israel? Okay, His people appears 159 times. Nowhere in Scripture are Gentiles referred to his people. Nowhere in the Bible are faith-only believers referred to as people. We are not his people. You, me, everybody after the year 64-ish, 68-ish even, uh, the year, we are not his people. Stop it if you are calling yourself his people. God has a definition for his people. Let's read a few of them. 2 Samuel, his people Israel. 1 Kings, his people Israel. 2 Chronicles, his people Israel. Where does that say you? Show me a verse where it says you are his people. We're not. Okay? Luke, Luke Israel, his people. 
the second thing that supports graft in being the, the Gentiles is the faith plus work salvation in the two groups. Again, we're going to go really quick through this, but the faith plus work salvation in, in Romans 11, where all the graft ins are, are in one gospel to two groups. Paul taught three different gospels, remember. If he taught three different gospels, all we really have to do is determine which of the three gospels is taught being taught in chapters 9 through 11. So we've got the gospel of the kingdom. We've got the gospel of Christ. We've got the gospel of God. Which one of these are preached in Romans chapter 11? Find out which one is the two groups. Nope, not that one. The Jews only. Oh, that one. First to the Jews first, then, okay. And no, not this one. Give some support to that. Gospel of Christ, Romans 1.16. It defines what the gospel of Christ is. It defines literally what this one is right here. Right? We've gone through this so many times. You all know it. Romans 1.16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What is the gospel of Christ, you might ask? Read on in the verse. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Which salvation? Everlasting salvation. Remember, you should always say, when you see the word salvation, you should always say, which one? Right? To everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It looks like we have two groups. Easy. These two groups, named in, in Romans 9 through 11. Romans 9. Not the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. Two groups named again in 1 Corinthians. So you should know that if you see in 1 Corinthians 12, where it talks about two groups, which gospel are you in? Gospel of Christ. It's so easy. Whether they be, we be Jews or Gentiles, whether they be bond or free, all made to drink of one spirit, right? So the second point of the four points of support is the faith only works salvation taught in Romans is the gospel of Christ. Let's see, teaching of these groups, not the gospel of God, okay? So we've now defined what gospel of Christ is. Let's find real verses in the gospel of God and real verses in the gospel of the kingdom that show they really are just one group. They're not a two group. They're not a, God, they're not a Romans 11. Again, we're going way more detail than I shouldn't have been having to read it. But Colossians 3.11, you know this one. There's neither Greek nor... There aren't two groups in this gospel. There aren't two groups in this gospel. This one, there is only one group. And I love... We are going to read these last ones here. Matthew 10.5. These 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, go, I mean, the 12 are, re are representative, so go, go not into the way of the Gentiles. Oops, didn't get that one highlighted. Sorry. Don't go, uh, do not go in the way of the Gentiles. Do not preach this gospel to Gentiles. It's not offered to them. It's offered to one group. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go to Israel. This one is taught to one. This is my favorite one, John 4, 22. Boy, this puts the, what, what did, what did uh, Pastor Jordan used to say? This tags the, r the ribbon on the bush? So, something like that. I can't remember what he used to say. Anyway, John 4, 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews and the Gentiles? Nope, not in John. It's of the Jews. It's of one group. Right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts. All of those are going to the Jews at one till Acts uh, 10 and then Acts 15. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all to the house of Israel, all salvation to the Jews. Not one person who is a Gentile was saved or grafted in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No Gentile was saved, period. Salvation is of the Jews in this gospel, right? Okay. So these are some technicalities that, that people get confused in. They call the first, few, first fruit Israel. Well, here's the verse that's going to prove it isn't. First fruit, Romans eleven sixteen. 16, which again, Romans 11 is where we're focused on. That's where all these graphs are. Is Jesus Christ, it, oh, it is not Israel. Three times in the gospel of Christ uses the word first fruits. 
Romans 11, 16. For the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches, right? So who is this first fruit? Let's find a couple other verses that actually say, Christ is the first fruit. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits, plural, of them that sleep. Okay? How about another one? 1 Corinthians 15, 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. It's like it's his label. Like he put that on his little shirt. Christ the first fruits, right? <laughs> as a, as a, that's telling us who first fruits are. First fruits are not Israel. So when you read about first fruits in Romans eleven sixteen, it's not talking about Gentiles being grafted into Israel. It's talking about them being grafted into Christ, the first fruits. Okay? Conclusion, first fruit referred in the gospel of Christ is Christ Jesus, not Israel. Second, the root in Romans eleven sixteen 16 is holy. It is Jesus Christ. It is not Israel. The root is not Israel. The root is Christ. The root appears 44 times in Scripture, two times referring to Jesus Christ. Romans eleven sixteen, 16, where we're talking about the root be holy. But what about Revelations 5, 5, where it actually calls himself, it calls Jesus Christ. I shouldn't say Jesus, calls Christ the root of David. Now, the reason why this root is capitalized and this root is not, I am the root and the offspring of David, when Christ is talking, when he's returning, okay, the reason why this one is, this is not an official title. This is an official title of him. What do we do with names? We, we capitalize them. It's easy. We do, we do it with names. We do it with places. This one just wasn't a name. It's talking about an identity, uh, but not an actual official name. The root of David is an official name. We should capitalize just like, just like we capitalize Josh. Don't we? Capitalize Josh? No. No. Oh. All right. So conclusion, the root in 11.16. They can't go after the root and say, well, that's Israel. And so they're being grafted into the Israel. No, they're being grafted into Christ through the faith of a Jew. The Jewish faith. <clears throat> right. So to break it up in manuscript lines, this one talks about graft. That one just confuses the word grafted. OK. And in summary, yes, this is the summary. In the KJV, it's graft. In all the others, it's grafted. I don't know why they want to use when a person of trust takes money or property dishonestly. Because that's what that word means to me. They, they, they may. They may. Or is that stealing? It's like. Maybe it's right. Yeah. I don't know. You're paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> Graft only appears six times all in one chapter. It's not about our faith, and it's not about much of the faith. It talks about that small window, 14 years from the year 48 to 62, when, when God opened up, gave to Peter in, in, in Romans, uh, in Acts 10, and then repeated in Acts 15, 7, where, where he gave to Peter this opportunity for Gentiles to be grafted in and become Jews, okay? The same, the same everlasting salvation offered to Jews in the gospel kingdom is being offered to the Gentiles who convert to Jews and are grafted in in the gospel of Christ. Same gospel, except we're adding something so we have to call it the gospel of christ we can't call it the the gospel of the kingdom plus gentiles <laughs> okay that's why they call it the gospel of christ his people in scripture only refers to israel not the jewish faith but gentiles are grafted into christ gentiles are grafted into christ the first fruit and the root gentiles are not being grafted into israel graft in the two groups Whenever you see two groups, you know it's talking about the gospel of Christ from that 48 to 62. You know it's not talking about your gospel, the gospel of, of God, and it's not talking about the gospel before that, the gospel of the kingdom. Whew. This is more to just put it out there on the internet so we can all review this, so we can share it with people who say, oh, well, we're grafted into Israel. We have the verses now all in one place.
that we can refute that or just have them watch the 45 minute video. Hopefully it's only 45 minutes, but have them watch the video and say, no, 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 you're, you're not understanding what graft means or you're not understanding who it is or who it's being grafted into. You don't understand the difference between Israel and Jews. It's one's a country, one's a faith, right? Okay. So, <clears throat> graft happens this time, right? Uh, yep, that's all I have. Graft doesn't exist outside of that time frame. Great. Well, thank you all. Any questions? Thoughts? No? Isn't it ironic that it took us and I suppose to a degree we can blame ourselves because of the patrons are not studying. It's start it, it's really clicking as far as the two groups, it's really clicking as far, right? And now we can associate that, that two groups with the graft in and, and with the conversion of the Gentiles. And, oh, they're pretty happy about the conversion of the Gentiles in, in, in Acts. Well, why would they? It was never offered. So obviously that time in Acts is talking about two groups. Right? And we were reading, well, some of us were reading the wrong Bible. Yeah. So yes. not only further, the... Added to the confusion. Yeah. Yep. And when we think about this so called tax season. Yeah. Um, Yikes. Granted, the government needs funds. <clears throat> that we can have the uh, conveniences that we have, but it's quick to uh, relate it to an overextension of government. Yeah. Yeah, and before 1913, you know, there was no income tax. And it seems like the government lasted, you know, 140 years before that. They would issue war bonds if they needed to generate, you know, um, money. Um, and after 1913, now we so conveniently have not only income tax, but we also have the Federal Reserve, who the United States government can borrow from. Hmm, that's handy. That now we don't actually have to go to the people to get permission to, to borrow money. We can just borrow it from a make-believe entity who has make-believe money who and so yeah uh, the 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 government needs money but there's 140 years there where they got a, they got by just fine why why in the last hundred years do we have this income tax yeah 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 give money away to other countries act like G Goodwill ambassadors, BlackRock, whatever you want to name it, um, UNICEF, I don't care who it is, um, they, they are fleecing us, to say the least. Um, anyway. Great, well, thanks for Romans 11, and thanks for Graft In.